Welcome back to web2.0.tv. I'm Thomas Tucker. We are live from the Innotech Trade Show here in Austin, Texas. I'm here with Dewey, Dewey Gadke right, from Mingle here in town. Uh, we're talking a little bit about web 2.0 technologies today and what's going on with the marketplace. Dewey, you're doing some incredibly innovative things right now, especially with the social networking platforms that are out there with Mingle. How would you define Web 2.0 as it pertains to your industry right now, and what do you think uh, it has done to change the marketplace over the last 12 to 18 months that has led you to create this new product that you're offering? Well, without getting overly technical, I kind of view Web 2.0 as usability. Mm -hmm. um, Web 1.0 sites were great for doing research, and they were great for uh, posting a single form, but if you had to spend hours in an application, the page reloads, it was just clunky, it was painful, you want to Boring. kill yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so Web 2.0 has made sites actually behave much more like desktop applications, much more interactive and functional. Absolutely. And now people can actually um, use them for extended periods of time. You know, the big change that's brought on is that you're seeing hundreds of millions of people start using these sites to manage their lives. Absolutely. They're really facilitating real world interaction. Correct. Absolutely. With any new offering, we all know that the key to success in a business is to find a need and fill it, really. Uh, what is the pain that social networkers are experiencing that has led you to uh, develop Mingle, and how does it alleviate this pain? So we've got a, a pretty broad feature set. Yeah. Um, we allow you to merge all your friends lists from various sites. Like which sites are we talking about? MySpace, Facebook, Tag, Bebo, iMeme, High Five. All in uh, one place. Yelp. You can merge all your friends list. Um, you can uh, send one, you can tag them all. So we standardize your way for searching for friends. And you can say, let's say I want to tell all my wakeboarding buddies that we're meeting on the lake this Saturday. Right. I can type one message, send it to wakeboarders, and it goes to all of them on the different sites. That's amazing. Um, we also allow you to edit your content in one place, and as soon as you save it, it updates on multiple sites. Um, we also allow you to uh, hide content uh, and set rules on who can see it, so I could put pictures of our wakeboarding trip and only let people in my friends list tagged wakeboarding actually see that content. Nice. How do you support that permission system, given that the permission system and levels for Facebook or MySpace are vastly different? Well. Um, the, the, the interesting thing we can do about being a multi-site tool is we have the aggregate data. We, we know right. um, data about you from MySpace. We know data about you from Facebook. We also know how, how your friends have tagged you. So we've got a lot more comprehensive attributes to drive our uh, security engine against. Right. And it's very simple. You don't have to set up levels. You don't have to set up uh, any of that stuff. You just tag your friends and the rules that apply to those tags work. You just rock and roll. Yeah. Nice. I keep hearing this phrase, especially at the trade show here today, breaking down the walled garden, right? I keep hearing it thrown around. But what is, especially in reference to Mingle, like, can you share with us what this phrase means and kind of how it will affect, I mean, how will it affect my personal net social networking experience? So all these sites say they're open, but they're really kind of like the, uh, turnstile in the subway. You can go in, you can go one way. Right. And they're, they're kind of open and they're getting more open, but we, we really hope to push them to be more open. But it's hard for them. They make their money based on the time you spend viewing their pages. That's right. Right? So they don't want you to leave the site. Right. And they definitely don't want you to be able to view your emails and your uh, pokes and your invitations and your events somewhere else other than their pages. Because then they lose advertising revenue. Absolutely, they lose their advertising revenue. So they, they have a very strong uh, incentive to keep the walls up. Absolutely. And Mingle um, doesn't do that. We bring that data to you to, mm -hmm. as a user, and, and you, can, you can be on Google or CNN and still see your emails coming in from Facebook, still see your uh, friend invitations coming in from MySpace. Without having to go back and refresh exactly. the page all the time. Exactly, that's an, that's an amazing offering. I mean, especially with uh, the way that social networks are, are operating today in Web 2.0, you spend so much time and energy putting in all of that content for your local blog or for your pictures that you don't, but you don't seem to own that content once it's once it's on the site. Is, is that kind of what you're what you're pushing back against? Meaning, what you mean by breaking down the wall garden? Yes being able to run functionality across sites. We also give you single sign-on, so the minute, since Mingle is a browser enhancement, right. the minute you launch your browser, you're automatically signed into all your social sites. You don't have to type names and passwords. Nice. And we have an Ajax interface that lets you drag and drop content from your MySpace page to your Facebook page. Really? Yes. Now, your application, uh, you mentioned, is a browser enhancement. Your application is actually a downloadable plugin, correct? Correct, it's a toolbar. It's, it's a, a toolbar. It enhances your browser. 
to do something very similar to picture-in-picture uh, -picture on your television. Right, so what was the kind of the mindset and the strategy behind going with that approach rather than going with a complete web-based or Ajax approach? So, we don't think, this is just our view, but we don't, no matter how cool your Ajaxy website is, we don't think it wise to ask 200 million youth to please move to another location. Ah, okay. Okay. We believe the destination wars are over for the time being. Because then you'd be doing being. the same thing that they're doing. We believe the destination <laughs> wars are over for the time being. So Mingle doesn't ask you to come to our site. We ask you to hang out wherever you want, and we bring the functionality to you. Nice. Right? And there's a bunch of technical reasons for it as well. We can do a lot of things that none of the other sites can do. Mm -hmm. Well, really moving forward, past Web 2.0, um, and we can really see how Web 2.0 new technology is changing the world, but uh, obviously it's changing these industries of the social networks and things like that. How do you think that your application is really going to impact these people? What's going to be their response? Uh, I think the users are going to love it. The sites, <laughs> so, so the, the incumbent sites probably may not be that happy with our technology. Right. But our view is that People would like to stray a little farther and explore other communities and explore other features of other sites, right. but it's a pain. Right now, you've got to remember multiple names and passwords. You've got to keep a different friends list. You've got to have different ways to email those people. You've got to have, ha having, being, having, exploring these new communities is difficult now. So we think Mingle um, levels the playing field. Yes, it's going to pull some eyeballs away from Facebook and MySpace, right. but it makes it very much easier for you to hang out at some cool new small Ajaxy site with a subset of your friends and still keep up on what's happening back on Facebook. Amazing. So we know as Web 2.0 continues to empower users, which is essentially what you're doing, helping them break down the walls in between these large conglomerate uh, you know, social networking applications, as it continues to empower users, um, how do you plan to listen to their feedback and, and listen to them voice their demands <coughs> as they get more and more authority, more and more voice? So we've got a very creative team and we've got years of features and vision ideas that right. we'd like to implement and we think are cool, but we really want to sit back and take our, our, our first set of users after we launch, uh, we want to take our first set of users and let them really tell us what they want next. So we've built a whole uh, forum, nice. forums.mingle.com, so that they can come and give us feedback on what they like, talk amongst themselves, uh, criticize, request. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we're really going to be monitoring and communicating with our users in a very active way to get their feedback about what they what we should do next. Dewey Gadke, walls are coming down. Exciting stuff, Dewey. I really appreciate you spending some time with us today. Thank you. Uh, we'll be right back with Web2.0.tv.